Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponderon Weather here. We've got a lot of moving parts happening in the weather department over the next seven to 10 days with some big changes ahead. So we're really gonna dive deep in this update and give you an overall big picture of how this is all gonna unfold. So let's take a look at this 500 millibar and you can actually see where this ridge of high pressure has been locked over the Pacific Northwest and much of Canada. That is your heat dome up there with a lot of dry conditions and unfortunately where all the wildfires have been. Further south, we do have a trough that's sneaking in off the coast of California. That's bringing some unsettled weather across central California. And at the same time, we've got another significant dip in the trough. That's kind of a backdoor trough that's gonna be shifting off into the Northeast, pushing across into portions of the Mid-Atlantic and eventually sneaking into parts of the Southeast with much cooler anomalies and unsettled weather for them. But for today, we've got that Northwest flow wind and some of that smoke could actually sneak into the Northeast and bring a lot of smoke in that, that area, but also an un very unusual setup with some critical and even elevated fire risk up there in portions of Michigan, across portions of Pennsylvania. We're gonna have what they call dry thunder up there, some dry lightning happening in these regions. So the elevated areas look to be too dry to actually have some of this moisture to reach the surface, but it's gonna be kicking off some a lot of lightning in this region and those could spark a, a, an elevated fire risk in these regions. So this is a kind of an unusual type of event that could unfold later on this afternoon into the early evening time frame. So if you live in the Allentown region, back here into Philadelphia, back in towards Wilmington, you're under that scattered area of, that could be seeing that sporadic lightning display that could spark some wildfires up in that region. And that's why they've got that critical fire risk in place. So, so if we take a look at the big picture, you can actually see in the water vapor imagery where that trough is sneaking in, that's bringing some rain showers of across portions of central California. We also have that other significant trough that's diving in in portions of New England. That's bringing all the chillier conditions while much of the central states have been under that more or less Northwest flow. That's kind of bringing up some rounds and scattered activity during the heating of the ap afternoon. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna be seeing. So if you look at some of the lightning displays that's gonna unfold later on this afternoon, this kind of gives you a depiction of where this kind of diurnal heating type thunderstorms are gonna unfold across portions of New Mexico, back into Colorado, back into portions of West Texas. But further north, you can see the Northeast, you see this sporadic lightning display, but not much rain to speak of. So it's kind of an unusual event to see something like that but that could un unfold later on this afternoon and it's going to bring all that smoke with it so with the with the northwest flow aloft all that all those wire fires up there in canada is going to be dragging down some of that smoke up there in portions of the northeast and that actually could extend into portions of kentucky swinging into portions of virginia and north carolina later on this afternoon into tomorrow time frame as well if we break down the precipitation front over the next 48 hours in the middle of the country, we just, again, we just have this kind of diurnal type heating thunderstorms. These are typically bubble up in the heat of the afternoon, and they typically try to die off after they lose some of that daytime heating. So this is where the moisture is going to be over the next 48 hours. And we still have kind of the remnants of what is even left over of what was our lean down there in the Gulf of Mexico. That's further south now that puts that training thunderstorms across into portions of South Florida, they could be getting some very heavy rain across this region. But you can see further north, there's not much rain to speak of with those dry thunderstorms up there in good part of the Northeast. It's only really Maine that gets into the heavier rain and that's a chillier rain uh, for them. But you can see the breakdown over the next couple of days on the temperature anomalies heading into Wednesday. It drags down those much cooler anomalies for sure up there. They've been seeing that as of late, and I think that only compounds and actually extends as we get deeper into the day on Wednesday, heading into Thursday. Some of these areas could be looking at almost 20 below average temperatures at times, and then further off into the west, that's where you see that trough coming in off the west coast. But here's the breakdown on some of these low temperatures 
going through Wednesday time frame, you can see widespread 40s and 50s across a good part of the Great Lakes into the Ohio Valley regions and the Midwest regions and across the mid-Atlantic and well up into uh, the Northeast experiencing those cooler cooler than average temperature anomalies and that backdoor trough just kind of sneaks in a little bit further off into the southwest as we get into thursday morning extending those cooler cooler than anomalies well into illinois by then well into portions of kentucky even some record low temperatures 49 degrees there in eastern kentucky could be felt by the time you wake up on thursday morning and then if we extend into friday i think that's where it ends i think that's where the trough really starts to shift further off into the southeast now we're talking pl places like into alabama are going to be waking up into the 50s and a, a lot of these areas up here in alabama back down towards georgia getting into south carolina as well as pretty much almost the entire state of north carolina is getting getting into those 50s but you can see in the middle of the country where they've got you know some of that at added moisture content and some of those higher dew points those lows aren't going to be you know are definitely going to be above average so there's there's definitely areas above average, but there's actually plenty of more areas with those troughs coming in on either side that brings in much cooler conditions. So if the breakdown over the next five days looks like this, right? So the ridge of high pressure is locked over good part of Canada and much of the Northwest territories and into the Northwest, while much of the much further south complements of troughs on either side of the coast is bringing in that cooler cooler air and trying to squeeze it in the middle of the country so your coldest anomalies are going to be on either side and across portions of the western regions of california and then also obviously up, up here into the upper midwest and across the mid-atlantic and into the into the northeast and it's really all complements with this dip in the epo the dip in the ao the dip in the nao of these teleconnections actually go negative for the next several days so you can actually see this massive dip that's bringing the overall cooler conditions up there for your essentially our eastern side of the u.s but once we get past say the ninth time frame i think that's where things start to change so we still got another three or four days to experience those cooler than average anomalies then things are going to be reverting back uh, then we're finally going to get some warmer conditions start to move in once we get past the 10th time frame so now let's take you all the way out there in the west pacific remember this super typhoon this was way back in may the 25th so we're going to take you all the way back when this really intense super typhoon was impacting guam at that time frame in fact it maximized once it went went past guam and it got up to 100 and 85 mile per hour super typhoon fortunately for a good part of korea it actually swung and kind of missed as it recurved out there and so it was still a tropical storm just three days ago and that was on june the third but what's going to happen is that's going to be continuing to lift north northeast and that's going to be pulled into the aleutian islands and that's going to eventually going to be a major player in our weather setup heading into the following week for a good part of the country so we're going to really break this thing down for you because by the time we headed to say the 12th time frame so here's the 12th time frame by that time on the 500 millibar all that energy remember the source i mean it came from a 185 mile per hour super typhoon it's got a lot of energy leftover energy to work with once that's mixed up in the aleutian islands it's going to drag down a significant trough down here off the west coast and we're going to be seeing that trough buckle all the way down into the baja so that's going to be pulling in maximized energy further south and really have some elevated winds to work with and all that energy is going to be still mixing up with the leftover leftover effects of that super typhoon and that is going to change really the dynamics of what's going to unfold next week see this ridge of high pressure further south in mexico that's a 594 millibar uh, you know dcm of low you know, very intense ridge of high pressure that's all those you know really kind of record heat down there in mexico with the with the significant trough that's going to be coming in off the west coast 
that's going to bring some severe storms on the front side of it but eventually once that moves out that's going to bring some really really intense heat over portions of texas but it's also going to be strong enough where it's going to be able to spin up an area low pressure up here across good part of the ohio region and where they've seen a lot of drought conditions rapid out instead of drought and that's going to bring some elevated rains and storms in that region for about two days complements of a progressive front front but then that's going to spin up its own area of low pressure center in that region and bring some definitely some welcome rains by the time we headed to say that that 12th and say that 13th time frame so there's a, definitely a lot of moving parts but on the front end like i mentioned with that with all that lift tapping into some of those really highly elevated dew points high high cape values we are going to be experiencing some severe storms across the, the southern plains really starting on your weekend time frame scattered strong to severe storms across a good part of the southern plains possibility uh, uh, during the day on saturday i think that actually continues on sunday the june the 11th time frame and that likely extends into your monday as well with uh with again that dynamic ridge further south into Mexico getting squeezed you can see it actually you know getting pulled into South Texas by then and so by that time that's going to eventually start to mix in and the and the the heat is really going to be taken over further south but before that we've got all that energy to work with so here's the breakdown on the precipitation front heading into Sunday we've got that progressive front right here's the dry slot on the northern northern side but out ahead of it we've got a fairly decent progressive front that's going to be moving in but you know out ahead of it that's going to bring some much needed rain showers across portions of Missouri getting into Illinois back into Indiana and Ohio regions at the same time we've got some severe storms down further south into Oklahoma and Texas so if we break down the precipitation front as we head into that Monday time frame some of these storms are going to be probably severe into portions of Texas but further off into the east this is the welcome rain to speak of complements of the progressive front and then the combination of low pressure that's going to be developing from that energy from the leftover from that super typhoon <laughs> so we've got a lot of heavier rain sneaking back in the picture into portions of Miss mississippi back into alabama getting into tennessee into kentucky but most importantly back into illinois into indiana and yes ohio finally gets in the action with some much needed rain by then and there's that low pressure we could be even as strong as a 994 millibar low pressure really starting to get its act together and spinning over these areas that are desperately needed rainfall and underneath that it looks like at least a two-day event so we've got heavier rains moving in with that progressive front and then we have that area low pressure going to be maximizing itself over the good part of the Midwest with some very welcome rain, but noticed in the middle of the country, right? So once this moves out, that ridge of high pressure that's been been over Mexico will be finally lifting further north into Texas by then. And you can actually see by the 13th of the month, big changes ahead with this very intense ridge of high pressure going to be sneaking in into south texas and eventually going to be taking over and a good part of good part of texas with a lot of heat really starting to build and i think we even get beyond that through the 15th through the 20th time frame that's going to be lifted even further north and it really and start to encompass oklahoma parts of arkansas getting into louisiana and mississippi but Here's the 13th, right? So we see these, this is your actual feels like temperatures. Remember this area has had a lot of rain lately. So that means the ground is pretty moist. So whenever you throw this heat dome over it, that means we're gonna be seeing likely heat advisories unfold in these regions with these really elevated heat indices well into the triple digits for a good part of uh, Texas by then and look at the dew points folks right i mean this is on the 13th of the month by the time we head into next tuesday we've got these dew points in the well into the 70s and the 75 degree range you compound with all that heat that's going to be associated with it 
Yeah, we've got widespread triple digit heat indices for a good part of Texas, Central Texas, North Texas, especially South Texas. They could be approaching 110 degrees feels like temperature. So that is definitely big changes ahead of what you've been experiencing of late. And all the dynamics are going to unfold by the time we head into that 13th and really start to maximize itself by the time we head towards the 15th of the month. So with the combination of the heat indices and that ridge of high pressure really going to be locking itself over central and north Texas by then, by the time we head into 15, we could be looking at widespread triple digit heat for a good part of Texas. And that will eventually try to sneak further north into Oklahoma and eventually sneak into Arkansas and portions of Louisiana. And if we extend it and head to the ensembles, on that 10 to 15 right so it's going to start off in mexico and it's going to be shifting and migrating further further north and the really the most intense heat is going to be over central and north texas but eventually as we get deeper into that that uh, towards that third week of june that ridge of high pressure is going to be lifting further north and is eventually going to compound, you know, kind of congeal together with that ridge over the top that's been locked over Canada and much of our northern states. And eventually that's going to take over and start to win the war on some pretty big time heat. That's on the, uh, the, the European ensembles and the GFS is definitely kind of implying the same thing. So, yes, I'm definitely concerned about really excessive heat starting into the 13th time frame really maximize it over the 15th time frame from that 15th to the 20th time frame we could be looking at a lot of triple digit heat really starting to build over a good part of texas oklahoma southern missouri by then getting into arkansas heading into louisiana back into mississippi even western tennessee could get on the action by then and that could eventually try to sneak into uh you know portions of alabama uh, by then, once we get into that 15th and 20th time frame. So definitely a lot of moving parts to speak of in the next seven to 10 days with all the dynamics that we're going to be unfolding in the atmosphere. So that's the full breakdown on this update. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.